Oh my God. Here we go. LaCroix. Because LaCroix is very mean girls. Like I feel like I drank LaCroix. Dang. My entire mean girls experience. Though like lime, not my favorite flavor. No offense, LaCroix. <coughs> Karma. Oh my God. That's so bubbly. Bob. Yeah. I'm going to start. I love you. Here we go. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Christina Alabato. I played Gretchen Wieners in Mean Girls on Broadway. I can't believe I had to just say played, but tis what it is. And I am starting a new series on my channel where I'm gonna talk through all of my favorite Mean Girls memories from start to finish. And we are starting today with my audition process. I just thought like, look, Mean Girls is over for me personally, but Mean Girls is not over in the entire universe and also will never be over for me for realsies. It'll be in my life forever because Gretchen Wieners is a serious part of me. I thought it'd be fun to kind of like stretch out just telling you about my experience in like deep depths from start to finish and to currently because again Mean Girls and the community is alive and well forever. So I'm gonna call this new series Mean Girls Memories. It's not like that great but three M's? I don't know. Um, that's the best I could do. I tried like doing something with like fetch um, if anyone has a better name for it, put it in the comments and like maybe I'll change the name. But for now, it's Mean Girls Memories with Gretchen Wieners herself, me. Join me with a LaCroix if you have one or something else. LaCroix is very Mean Girls. So sit back and relax and um, here is story time with me. So let's start at the beginning. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Christina Alabato and I'm an actor. I've been living in New York City for the last, I guess, 12 years, though I'm in LA right now. And I've been in the Broadway industry um, since 2008 when I started with a show called Spring Awakening. Um, fast forward over the years, I did tons of off-Broadway shows and Broadway shows. I made my Broadway debut in the Green Day musical American Idiot, punking it out on stage. And then I did American Psycho in 2016. Those are my two Broadway shows, a bunch of stuff in between tours, off-Broadway. I also do animation and all types of things. Um, so it's a very fun, very um, eclectic career in showbiz for me. My journey to Mean Girls, I just kind of wanted to talk today about my audition process. For you actors, I'm gonna go like in depth about how, what my process was of getting involved in the show, getting into the show. Um, so here we go. So this all started, my process with Mean Girls all started uh, actually when it was in its lab and development uh, time in the Broadway world, a lab, a workshop, a table reading, that's all like the development process of a new musical. So it'll start with a table read where actors just sit around with a script and read um, whatever character they get assigned. And then it'll move into a workshop phase where you're in a room with a cast learning numbers and figuring out if the song works in this area. And then you'll do labs um, where you do the whole show in a rehearsal room. So around the lab workshop time, I was always in auditions for Katie actually, which is so interesting to think back to because the thing I actually love about Mean Girls as an actor is that I could see myself in a lot of different roles. I think I have pieces of me that are very Katie-esque and pieces of me that are very janice -y. Quick trivia, I always wanted to be Janice because Janice in the movie was less. So I was like, Janice, pieces of me that are Gretchen, pieces of me that are Karen. So I, I could see myself in a lot of different roles in the show, but at the beginning I was always in for Katie. And to be totally honest, and this is for you actor friends, no one gave me a second glance. For whatever reason, I was not interesting or the kind of like person or energy they were looking for for Katie at the time. And so I never moved forward. It was really in and out. Thank you so much, Christina. Have a great day. That was it. Like that was my first couple of auditions for Mean Girls. And then a year went by. When you're auditioning for shows, this is a long journey, right? So I probably had my audition for Mean Girls like two years before I was ever in it for a different character. I mean, think about how crazy that is. And I think that kind of helps you let yourself off the hook that it might not be then, but it could be later and could be even better than you ever imagined, right? Then about I guess a couple of years later, I had heard about the show. All of my friends were in it. I was obsessed with it. I thought that the cast was incredible. I thought that the show was incredible. Um, and I was doing a ton of other things. So it wasn't even really on my radar anymore because the original Broadway cast was like freaking killing it. And Mean Girls was like this mega hit. And other than me being like, oh my God, it would be so cool to be in the show. And then I, and my agent called me and said, hey, Christina, tell C, uh, casting is calling because Ashley Park is leaving the show and they would love to see you for Gretchen Wieners. And I was like, Gretchen! 
Gretchen. Come on. I like, I thought I would be back in for Katie because I had been in for her again when it was going to DC. Or, I mean, I thought Janice because like my entire body of work is like punk rock shows and like I'm a Janice. And then they were like, no, casting is really insisting that you look at the Gretchen material because they really believe that you are Gretchen Wieners. And I was like, okay, let me look at it. So like I went home. I was like, let me listen to this song. Obviously like Ashley Park is like literally the greatest person on planet earth and I was like let me look at this and see how it fits for me I have no idea and I looked at it and I feel like I opened the book and the heavens it was like ah! and I was like oh my god I am Gretchen I was like I wasn't thinking about it that way because sometimes like in as an actor you get kind of pigeonholed in these certain like shows that 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 I don't know like I was in all these like punk like dramatic like intense shows and I started working on the material and I was like oh my god this is exactly what I should have been in for from the beginning. And I am so excited that I get the opportunity to do this. So I started working my butt off on the material. I had to learn what's wrong with me and the scene in the bedroom and the yes, Regina, no, Regina, every waking hour. I went in for my first um, audition with Mary Mitchell Campbell, who's the music director. And we worked on a couple things with the song. Again, for actors going in for roles that existed before, Ashley Park is a freaking genius. And her version of Gretchen is perfect. When I looked at the song, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to try to sing this in my own voice with my own spin on it because that would make it more authentically me. And if they want me to do it a little bit differently than I bring it in, they'll tell me. So I went in with my own version. I did it a, maybe a little bit poppier. I, I used my own bass line of singing. Um, and so I worked with Mary Mitchell Campbell, our music director on it, and she was so excited. She was like, oh my God, I love your voice on this. It sounds great. Think about these. Why don't you flip in a different place here? Um, use a little less vibrato here, a little more like whatever. We worked through the song and she was like, and we'll see you back um, to work with the director. And I was like, oh my God, yay. So I went home, worked on all this stuff, worked on the scenes, and found my authentic way into Gretchen. Again, for you actors listening, finding your way into these characters, especially characters that exist before you, is like a practice in itself of like finding your own authentic way in, right? It's about always, and I've said this forever, I paid total homage and learned so much from Lacey Chabert and from Ashley Park because they created Gretchen Wieners. They built the foundation upon which she lives and breathes. So I must and would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't learn from them, especially that they're both comedic geniuses. So I learned from both of them and then I went, okay, how do I make this Christina, right? Because I'm never going to be Ashley and I'm never going to be Lacey, but I'm going to be Christina having learned from Ashley and Lacey and Gretchen Wieners herself, right? Does this make sense? So many Gretchens now we're talking about. Anyway, so I found my own way in. And part of that was reconnecting with some of my childlike excitement and um, passion and things that I hadn't thought about a lot in some of the stuff that I was doing as an actor. Um, I don't necessarily dress like Gretchen Wieners. So I started wearing high heels and walking around my apartment and seeing what that felt like and wearing little skirts and like picking jewelry really specifically and putting on lipstick that made me feel really um, feminine and things like that to kind of tap into Gretchen herself. So a couple weeks went by and then I went in for my first session with Casey Nicola, our director. And it was me, him, Mary Mitchell, and the casting director who I love, Bethany. And Casey was so good about being receptive to what I was giving him. He could tell that I worked really, really hard on it and that I was malleable. No one's looking for a finished product. They're looking for someone that worked really hard and can take notes so that they can mold them into what the show needs. Casey Nicola is the director for a reason. He knows what the show needs. He knows how I'm going to fit into the cast. He knows all those things. And so I'm just there to learn and soak it up and give my spin and take notes. So me and him worked, um, worked in the room. He gave me a lot of great positive feedback. He, I could tell he was really excited about me, which for me was a really great indicator as an actor that I was doing the right thing. Sometimes in the room, you don't get a lot of feedback. You can't tell if someone's feeling you or vibing with you or if they're kind of like not into you. Um, and sometimes you can't tell even if they're doing that. Sometimes someone will be super excited about you and you'll never hear back. Or sometimes someone will say absolutely nothing and be like, thanks, next, and you'll get the job. It's so weird. But in this case, 
I could tell that I was making him excited and that I was possibly like wheels a churning. I could feel that energy from him and that meant so much to me and gave me confidence to then work towards what was my final callback the next day. Casey told me in the room, I want you back tomorrow. I want you to do these scenes with these notes exactly because you're right on the precipice of cracking her. And I was like, yes, awesome. Oh my God. So I went home. And I chilled because that is nerve wracking. Casey Nicola is a huge director. I had never worked with him. He was a new relationship for me. And even though I had credits and I had things that could prove that I, you know, have been in the business for a while and I, to a certain degree, know what I'm doing. It depends on the day. um, I was nervous. So I went home. I chilled. I took a bath. And again, I trusted what I had worked on for Gretchen herself for me. So my final callback was the next day and it was for the full creative team. So you had Casey Nicola there and Jeff Richmond and Tina Fey herself, which can I tell you something? And I would happily tell this to her face now that she's like my friend, but like I was freaking out. I've looked up to her as a comedian, as a boss, as a woman, as all these amazing things in my life. And I was like, oh my God, what if Tina Fey doesn't laugh at me once? Like, what am I going to do with my life? I I, I will just have to like crawl into a hole and never come out. And I was so nervous about that. And I will say my nerves associated with being in the final callback room for Mean Girls with all of the people associated with Mean Girls, Nell and all the producers. And I knew that Lauren would be watching my tape, Lauren Michaels and Tina Fey and Jeff Richmond and Casey Nicola and all these people and Mary Mitchell, these people that I dream of working with. I was like, I am so freaking nervous. So I tell this to you young actors because I was very nervous. I was outside the room sh- like like this, literally shaking because I was like, oh my God, like this is a big opportunity for me. Don't freaking blow it and get in your own way. I was freaking out and I was like, oh my God, I'm so anxious right now. I'm freaking out. And then a little light bulb went ding, ding, ding. And I was like, oh my God, I'm literally Gretchen Wieners right now. I am freaking out. I'm in a complete Gretchen Wieners outfit because I dressed for the audition, obviously. I had the highest heels on. I had like a little purse with me and I was like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Like Tina Fey's in the room. Like what if she doesn't laugh at me? And then like Casey Nicola, like what if he never hires me again in the Broadway world? And like Jeff Richmond, like what if I don't even sing his song like justice for him and Mary Mitchell's going to think my voice sucks and like Bethany's never going to bring me in for another show. And I was like, oh my God, I am going to use this finally to my benefit. My freaking out, I was like, I am Gretchen. This is Gretchen right now. And I used it and I went in there and I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. And I literally feel like I was Gretchen in the room because I was so nervous and so overly excited and so anxious. And I really feel like that's why I booked the role because I used it. I was not afraid of it. I wasn't like, Christina, stop freaking out. Christina, stop shaking. And even if I was a little bit, that's what Gretchen would do for herself. So it all worked out. Um, I went in, I did the scene, the Regina scene into what's wrong with me. Um, Tina Fey laughed a couple of times. And I remember the, the one time she laughed, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I could, t- I knew that she laughed because obviously like I know her voice and I was like, I can die happy now. I don't even need this job. I don't even care. She laughed. I'm good. I can literally walk out of here walking tall and feeling like I did it. Um, so I felt like I won in the room, but I did that. And then I did the yes, Regina, no Regina. And then I think that was all I had to do. Oh, I had to do the candy cane monologue and I totally channeled Lacey Chabert doing the Stab Caesar monologue because I think that's like one of the greatest things I've ever seen in the entire world. And I think once I got going in there, I just had a good time. I was like, I'm here. I've worked really hard at this. I've been working hard on Gretchen. If it's not Gretchen this time, I proved to myself that I could do comedy, musical comedy, which I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do. Um, I got to be in front of this table of incredible people. What an experience. What an opportunity. So I walked out of there tall. I could tell everybody was smiling and super happy. And then I went into the hallway and I prepped for the dance portion of the audition because there was a dance callback for Gretchen. Now, let me tell you what I was actually nervous about was this. Because I dance, yes. I have danced on Broadway multiple times, surprisingly though, um, because I, I, dancing was never my focus, right? Um, I can get through a dance call. I will never be the best. I will never kick the highest. I will never be the most turned out. Um, and I pretty much 
hate dance calls. But for this one, I knew we were going to do Fearless because I knew that was Gretchen's moment. And I had listened to the song a lot and I was like, this song is amazing. This is so fun. I'm just going to go all the way with this and just have fun. I, it doesn't have to be that I have to be a prima ballerina to get this job. I need to have fun. I watched Ashley do it on like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and in the show. And I was like, she is having so much fun and beaming and Gretchen is having her moment. And I was like, if I focus on that and let myself get out of my own head about getting every step right, I will book this job. I was like, just stay focused on what matters. And in that moment, all that matters to Gretchen is that she is having the best time ever. So I went in there, we all did the dance together, and I just freaking went for it. I hit it so hard, I messed up the whole time. And I had the most fun ever, and I just smiled and kept going. And that, I think, is the best lesson to you non-dancers out there. Just keep going and have fun and put a smile on your face. And I just had the greatest time ever. So went home that night and, you know, I think I had gotten some hints and clues upon leaving the audition room that possibly this was going to work out, um, which was amazing and an amazing feeling to walk away with. But then I didn't hear for two weeks. So I got these little whisperings over here that like, okay, Christina, looks like it's going to go your way. They really, really loved you. Like, we'll let you know. Like, we'll keep you posted. And then I literally had to wait for two weeks to get the call officially from my agent that I was going to be playing Gretchen Wieners on Broadway. So it was like, Three weeks till rehearsal started and that's where I'm going to leave you because I'm going to come back and tell you all about my rehearsal process from start to finish. <sighs> that was a long story, but that was actually really fun to relive. Anyway, I hope that was fun for you all. That was my journey to auditioning for Gretchen Wieners and booking Gretchen. It was a great time, super, super scary, but so amazing. And I'm so grateful for the support that I got in those audition rooms because sometimes you don't get that and that's okay too. Um, but the creative team, from the minute that I walked into those rooms was just so supportive of me. I'll never um, be able to thank them enough for how much they welcomed me and, um, and let me do my own thing and helped me craft Gretchen um, to what you all got to see on stage. So anyway, that's my story. Thank you all so much for watching my first Mean Girls Memories video. I hope this was fun for you. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my Mean Girls Memories videos as well as the other videos I'm gonna be releasing in between. Thanks so much for all of your love and support. Mean Girls community, Broadway fans, I love you all. Thank you so much.